Okay, cool. All right, now I'm ready. Uh, dirty, substrain with concatenation of all words. Um, you're given a string S and a list of words, words that are all of the same length. Find all the starting index of substring, uh, starting indices of substrings in S that is a concatenation of each word in words exactly once and without any intervening characters. Whew, that is a really long sentence. Um, cool. Uh, let's take a look at some inputs. I'm not sure if I understand this one per se. Uh, football. The words are football, zero and nine. Uh, substrings that starts foo and bo, uh, what? Our bar foo and foo bar respectively. The output order does not matter. Returning nine zero is fine too. Okay. Um, hmm. Again, this is another problem where I don't know what the ends are. Uh, like the length of the string and stuff like this, so that's always a little tricky. Uh, I mean, not, you know, so. But. Okay, so. Uh, so, yeah, so the words can have duplicate things. Um, okay. How would I think about this? My. It really does matter a little. I mean, it opens up with possibilities depending on uh, what is used and what is not. Um, I think for me right now, just thinking about uh, how to, um, like, what, what is the easy way to store states or think about the states? Uh, and you could. You could clearly do it explicitly, uh, but I was I'm thinking about or trying to think about a way to do it implicitly with if there's like an ordering of things that we can take care, uh, take advantage of and so forth. Um, but and also if like the number of words it's is small enough, then we can do some brute force on words instead. So there there are tricks that you can do, but but without knowing all the constraints. Uh, it feels like it's going to end up being um, a sort of a brute force thing. Um, I think one thing that I'm thinking a little bit of is some sort of uh, uh, a try-like type thing. Um, but in, unlike a traditional try, I, I would consider each of uh, each of the word in words as uh, a letter of the quote-unquote alphabet, uh, and then S being um, words that may fit in this dictionary uh, or fit in this alphabet or something like that uh, and whether uh, I don't know if I'm making that much sense from what I'm saying but that's kind of the idea that I'm thinking about now um, hmm. I f think um, Are all the words have the same length? Oh, I do. I did miss. I mean, I said it, but but knowing that I, but I was like, hmm, if th this, my thought process was, oh man, if all the words in the words have the same length, this would make it so much easier. And then I looked up, and I, that's true. So okay. So I think. Uh, hmm. So I think I have an idea. Uh, Hey, what's up, Ed Gods? Uh, give me a second let me, to think through this real quick before I answer your question. Um, so I think what I want to do is... Uh, no, 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 no. No need to apologize. I, you, you're not interrupting. You're not... You know, it's just that I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. Uh, but, but because of that, you know exactly what... Um, so you can... So this is actually just a rolling window then, right? Uh, because because all, 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 well I mean maybe not just a rolling window or like you can do it with a rolling window but no it's just still a rolling window
Yeah, you could do it with rolling window. Okay. It's just that you have to be careful about how you're rolling it. Um, because, so, so I think the way that I would think about this is, uh, let's kind of, you know, give you some example. Um, like, let's just use this one. Uh, and then you have, to, so you have, you have this as the input, and then you would first start with, um, you know, you know that this is going to be 16 characters, so you start with the first 16 characters, uh, e, something like that. And then you could keep track of what's in here and what's um, what's not used and so forth. And then that's it, right? And then you just roll four characters at a time. So that's kind of, um, so that's the tricky part is that, uh, and Mbrack talks about rolling windows a lot. But um, but that's pretty much all you need to do. You just do four letters at a time in this case. But um, you have to go back and do it again with an offset of, so for length for n is equal to 4, um, you have to start at, okay, s is equal to 0, uh, and then your next thing, to kind of take advantage of the states that you have, you, have, you would process it in this order. You have goes 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and then also zero, uh, 1, 5, I can do math, 13, 17, and then also, uh, you know, anyway, you get the idea here, I think. Um, and the... Uh, well, and the reason is because these things take advantage of the the rowing part of the rowing window or sliding window or whatever. Uh, but you just have to make sure that this goes all the way through and obviously this goes from 0 to 3 and then dot 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 on some of these. I don't know how the length is. And as long as you do that, then, you know, uh, you your rowing window, you take this out and then you put uh, the next word in and so forth. That, excuse me. So I think that's all that is required for this problem. Uh, huh. I mean, this is cute. I, I actually do dig this problem, if that's the solution. Maybe there's some harder one. I actually did think initially that this was going to be some sort of backtracking. That was my initial thought. But actually, you think this is a sliding window would be amazing. Uh, so, okay, let me... And because of this, you only look at each... Ca um, I, I have to think about the exact complexity. But because each character can only be the starting... Uh, once, uh, so maybe something like uh, n times m squared or something like that. Uh, once I write out the code, it'll be more obvious, but I think that's the way I would think about it. And yeah, I don't even need a try in this case. Um, you just need a lookup table, right? But yeah, uh, have I read CL? Yeah, I actually have a copy of the first edition CL <laughs> CLR before they put in the S. Uh, it has not really, uh, I mean, all my knowledge predates the code per se, but I would also say that, uh, and one thing that I mention a lot sometimes, anyway, is that, um, you know, especially when a lot of people, even when they take computer science in uh, in undergrad and so forth, uh, they learn the theory, right? But, and I, you know, my knowledge may be a little bit outdated, so, you know, let me know if that's right, all right? Uh, but yeah, exactly. Uh, which is that um, a lot of people learn the theory, but they don't code things. And in that way, um, uh, in that way, like you still need to practice the coding portion of the to get good at lead code and so forth. So yeah, uh, or just a programming guide maybe. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Liu Mashi? How you doing? Uh, no, I'm, I do a lot of competitive programming, so I'm just doing this mostly for fun. That's my short story. Okay, let me code real quick but that's that's my short story uh like for this problem like i took 10 minutes figuring it out i mean i have to type this up but but i actually do like it i like i mean there is like a sense of accomplishment right uh not accomplishment but just like it's like solving a quasi puzzle or solving sudoku and you're like okay you solve it and i'm like okay i did something i like okay there is an answer and when you do something new that you you didn't know that how to do immediately yeah, that's always good, and that's something that I like about this form. Uh, well, I, let me say that after I get it correct, maybe I'm just wrong, and I'll be like, oh, now this is a weird thing. But I think this is right-ish. Or like, I know that this is right, and maybe the complexity is too slow, but we'll see. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, so K... Let's just say K is you go to the length of the first word. Uh, and also, let's just double-check... Uh, if length of words is 
is equal to zero, then we return an empty array just in case they're, they're being annoying about it. And then now we can do for um, start, let's say, in range uh, zero to k. Um, uh, yeah, and then let's just set current as equal to start. And then, oh yeah, that's Let's set some variables. Uh, n is equal to the length of s, uh, and then uh, w is the length of words, say. Um, okay, and then now to begin with, um, let's put uh, the first whatever things to it. So, okay. Yeah, so let's just do current. Uh, well, okay, how do I want to program this? Okay, so yeah. Um, so for uh, in W, I guess, for each of these words, uh, we want to put things in a set, like in a rolling window. Uh, how do I want to do it? Hmm. Let's just do counters then, right? No. Well, okay, yeah, let's just do counters. So let's, uh, how do I want to do this? Uh, uh, okay, let's just do, I don't know, word count maybe? Naming is hard. All right, let's just do count. Is equal to collections dot counter. And then let's start by putting all the words in words, word in words, uh, count. Um, Word, uh, let's just say one, and then we know this is a good starting index if uh, if counter ever is zero uh, length, okay? Okay, uh, so let's just put in, um, yeah, s of the current, oops, uh, and current plus uh, w for each one, so let's just do counter, um, we want to subtract whatever's in here, uh, and then if no, okay, let's just do let's just use some temporary variables real quick, uh, so I could check the things. Uh, actually, I think maybe maybe those of you good in Python could tell me, but but I think I feel like there is like um hmm, like collections that counter has like a thing that's like you could check for non-zero size, right? I mean, I guess it doesn't actually return the, uh, like it doesn't actually delete it, so oh, in theory the complexity isn't necessary there or something like that. So I mean, dot, oh, I think of dot elements, but, uh, but let's just say if, uh, if this is equal to zero, then count, uh, let's just delete it, right? Remove it from the thing. Um, Okay, so this actually you could get it into negatives because the current strings is, may not be on the thing. And also I have to update uh, for each of them this loop. Let's just update current is equal to thing. Okay, so now you've went for one iteration of the thing. Uh, so now you can uh, go to the end. I have to do some bound checking though, to be honest. So like, because this will give me an uh, uh, index or a bound type thing. Um, but yeah, let's just get the base case, right? And then we could add that in. I think that's not that, uh, that's not that hard. Okay, fine, let's just do it here then, fine. If current uh, plus, uh, what is it? Uh, w times k, oh yeah, and I also I think this is wrong. This should be k, I got my wrong variables. Um, is greater than, uh, the length of the s, which is n, uh, then we just contain you. Though in theory you should break, but an extra couple of loops never hurt anyone. And also, uh, let, let's put this afterwards, so then we can uh, save some work. Okay, so now, uh, what is our base case? So if... Oh, why did I call it counter in some places and count in some others? Okay. Let's be consistent. Also, because we have to be consistent, because that's how coding works. 
if uh, if the length of this is equal to zero, then we, this is uh, part of the answer. We have to set up an answer list. Answer is equal. To, sometimes I call it result. Append. Uh, so we have current minus. Uh, so that's the where it began, right? Uh, maybe I should put that in a constant. But okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we have to do the actual sliding part. Um, so which is so current is already at the end while current plus k is less than n. Mm, so now we want to put in a word, uh, which is all this stuff really. And maybe I'll put in a function. Uh, well, not this yet. Uh, Let's put it in the end though. But we now also need to uh, remove the older string. Older string is equal to s of, eh, this is going to be the tricky part maybe. Uh, from here to, uh, 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 was it n times, which one is w? w minus 1 times k. Uh, and then you do this thing again, but except for you doing the other direction. Um, well, let's just copy and paste. Maybe I, should, maybe I should put this in the helper function actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. This is way too much copy and pasting. Uh, Uh, increment, let's just go increment uh, word uh, counter. Oh, well, and count number. Um, and then we just do this thing, really. And I think this is roughly all the code you need. Oh, well, this is just word. Keep. Uh, you don't need this twice. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then we just need something like this here again. Yeah, let's just put it here. Ah, post and comment. And then now we could just return the answer. Uh, am I good? Hmm. Well, let's run it and then see what happens. So this is a good factor in reading because I think I don't know, but I just. And I read this part, but I think I didn't really internalize it. That's what that means until really think about the problem. So maybe there's a thing about rereading the problems. Uh, oh no. There is an off by one somewhere, I guess. Whoops. Um, is it, should, should this be. I always get this a little bit wrong. I think this is probably maybe equal to. Hmm. This. Yeah, I always I should have tested that one though. I think maybe this is uh. Hmm. Always get these in uh string indexes a little bit off. I one grumble. <laughs> but uh, 
is this one right? Now let me let me try to think about it for a second. Uh, well, I guess we could test that. Uh, yep. So actually, I think I need this. Okay. Yeah, silly. Yeah, I guess I should test for it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, I to be honest, I mean, well, there are a couple of levels I could talk about this. Um, hmm. In a second. Uh, yeah, how long did I spend on this? You know, I did chat about it a little bit. Uh, 20 minutes, not bad. I mean, I did ramble about it a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think to be honest, like this is the first time I've seen this problem in general. Uh, but also, like the, I think this is the first time I've solved this problem. Uh, and what I mean is that, like for the other problems, like I, like dynamic programming or something like that, like I already know how I what what I want to do, and I have to figure certain things out. So what you how you saw me um, solve this problem live is actually how I would solve it on a contest, except for maybe I would not talk to myself as much uh, necessarily. I would like maybe do something on paper or something like that. Um, so okay, what what is there to say about this one? I think for an interview, this is kind of hard. Obviously, it is a little hard. Uh, I think uh, the concepts are kind of nice. Um, in that like rolling window, I feel like, especially in a few years in, uh, recent few years, uh, seen people asking more and more rolling window type, uh, sliding window, rolling window, two finger algorithms or whatever you want to call it, two pointers. Um. Like those problems have gotten more and more popular because I feel like um, I don't know it's easy to understand though I don't know how practical it is to be honest. Uh, like, uh, but I guess it's as practical as a lot of other algorithms uh, or or uh, strategies or thought processes and so forth. Um, it's something that I am personally a little bit weaker at, uh, just because in general I haven't thought about these things in so long, uh, and it doesn't come up that often, uh, really. Um, because um, in some cases also like you can just do the proof force thing and it's eh, yeah sure it's a bigger factor of n but like a lot of times the n factor doesn't really matter that much uh, well depending on what you're doing but at least in the for me my n's are very small I guess is what I'm trying to say um, but and this is kind of hyper specific but uh but yeah so I think like on an interview this is yeah like I said it's gonna be hard uh, there are a lot of other um, sliding window problems that I would practice first, uh, so I wouldn't necessarily think about this one. Uh, and I, maybe there are different types of solutions if that's the case, and let me know. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I would practice other sliding window problems first, unless you're really familiar with it and you could solve this, which is kind of cute. But uh, but for comparative programming, this is cute, and that's why I enjoy solving it. Uh, and actually, it's a very uh, interesting way of like uh, I think one key part about solving a lot of sliding window problems uh, and also just a lot of problems in general, uh, and I'm glad to mention this a bit, it was just to, uh, you know, figure out the invariant uh, and kind of figure out how things changes in a good way as you kind of, uh, in a bad way or whatever, uh, but just what don't change as you kind of change certain other things. Yeah, which is a little bit of a mouthful, but that's how we think about it. And here, um, like in a lot of sliding windows, you usually just move like one character by one character, and I couldn't really figure out a way to, to think about it. I think some of that was, um, yeah, I don't not what a good way of thinking about it. But the way that I ended up doing was that I was doing one word at a time because all the words are the same length. Um, and that allowed me to kind of... Uh, do the sliding window because the invariant is that uh, as words drop out, other words drop in, and so forth. And as soon as you do it with this pattern, uh, it seems okay and it fits right. Uh, I mean, I had one silly mistake, but they're off by one here, uh, which I'm always bad at. I need to be, I mean, I need to either be better about it or you know, write, write a print statement or whatever to test uh, kind of this case. So, and I did neither, so uh, so that's you know, on me, uh, but. But yeah, so I think this is kind of cute and really fun. And actually, I don't think it deserves this download. I actually dig this problem. So, uh, 
it is for me because uh, it I don't know if there's like a weird other solution and that's why not sure sometimes people hate on things I don't know uh, but yeah and oh yeah let's talk about complexity what is the complexity of this uh, hmm and you could do some caching in some places, but um, but yeah, overall, I mean, this is O of K. Um, th this is always going to be O of W. Uh, but this is O of N. So actually, I mean, th this doesn't really matter, I guess, because uh, what? I, so this is O of W times K, at least in my words. Uh, which is k is the size of the the each, each individual words and and it's just the length of the string um, because here uh, because you're doing a sliding window uh, each character will be looked at twice or maybe three times for each given uh, yeah each given k so uh, because you look at each character once for the incrementing and then another time for the decrementing. Um, well, well, I got I think my vocabulary is the opposite, but you get the idea. Uh, so that's why it's O of K times N. Um, and in space, I guess in space it's just O of N because of what we put in counter. Um, I was going to make some comments about this uh, causing more time. Um, but it's still a constant number of times per character uh, for each k, because uh, one to construct a string if you want to call it that, and then another time to hash the string if you think about it that way. Uh, and depending on you know if you have a hash table versus a tree hash or tree set, uh, and it's a little, it's different. But ideally, it'll be k times n. But yeah, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, I did actually dig this problem. Uh, thanks for the suggestion, uh, Mbrax. Um, yeah, I guess we don't really have much to say about this. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't expect this particular problem on an interview. Uh, it's a little bit on the harder part, or at least in the in the sense that, like, eh, sometimes you, <laughs> if you get a really hard problem, then it is what it is, and you move on. Um, I don't know. Cool.